A great scholar once said, All the secrets of the oneness of Allah, the hidden aspects of prophethood, resurrection, and imamah, the practical laws of Islam, the core of the teachings of 124,000 prophets and all of creations are founded within the spirits of Imam Ja'far bin Muhammad al-Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of The Teacher of Mankind with me, your host Ahmad Ali. Now the show is dedicated towards analyzing and examining the life of the 6th Imam, 8th Infallible, the one who has contributed so much to our lives and his contributions did not only affect our lives as Shia Muslims, nor the lives of Muslims in general, but the lives of every single human living on this planet. A prime example of the major contributions of Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, in our modern fields of sciences. Take for example biology, astronomy, physics, literature, Gnosticism, philosophy, astrophysics, mathematics, chemistry, Islamic law, jurisprudence and Quranic commentary. All of these were taught by Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him. If you were looking at Gnosticism, the laws of Islam, Islamic law, Al-Mufaddal and Safan were the students and were taught by Imam al-Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him. If you're thinking about chemistry and mathematics, we'll look at Jabir bin Hayyan, who was a prominent student of Imam al-Sadiq, and he's considered today as the father of modern day chemistry. And through the guidance of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, Jabir bin Hayyan was able to write 400 books on various topics. If you're looking at jurisprudence, you can go look for Zarara and Muhammad ibn Muslim, who were the students of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq and were taught along with 4,000 students in the Masjid of Kufa. So if you looked at the life of Imam al-Sadiq contribution after contribution, major events happened during the life of Imam al-Sadiq which we're going to inshallah touch upon today or in the next episode. Abu Hanifa, who is considered by many Sunnis as the greatest scholar and the founder of the Hanafi school of thought, was also a student of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq Now today, over 35% of the Muslim population across the world follow the Hanafi school of thought. And if you were to ask anyone, any Hanafi, who was the teacher of Abu Hanifa? A simple question. Their answer will either be various teachers. I heard one narration say he had 4,000 teachers and one of them was Ja'far al-Sadiq, peace be upon him. Now, we don't want to get into the authentication of this narration. But if you were to ask this question, who was the teacher of Abu Hanifa? Many of their scholars will not say Ja'far al-Sadiq because they don't want to give any credit. Fearing of giving any credit to Ja'far al-Sadiq. And if they do, they're just admitting to the knowledge of Ja'far al-Sadiq Why would you follow the students and not follow the teacher? Simple. Why would people, if, if, if they really knew who Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him, why would they follow the students and forget about the teachers? One of the biggest contributions of our sixth Imam, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, was in the field of monotheism, Tawheed. One day, an atheist by the name of Abdullah, a very common name in the Arab, Arabian Peninsula, but for an atheist, Abdullah is kind of weird, because you're the servant of Allah and you're an atheist. However, we don't want to get into the name. This Abdullah, an atheist, came across Hisham al-Hakam, who was one of the closest companions to Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him. And he asked Hisham, he says, do you believe in God? Hisham with certainty, he said, of course. He says, do you believe that he is the Almighty? Hisham replied by saying, of course. He is the Almighty and all-powerful and all-knowing. The atheist 
asked Hisham, he says, can he, referring to God, put the whole world inside of an egg without enlarging the egg, the size of the egg, or diminishing the volume of the world? Hisham was puzzled. What kind of question is this? For the atheists, they have these kind of questions to play with the minds of certain individuals. However, so Hisham said, give me some time so I can think. This man, this atheist said, you have from now until the end of the year to give me the answer. Although I know you don't have an answer to that, but I'll give you from today till the end of the year. After that, Hisham ran to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and he narrated, he said, an atheist man came up to me and he asked me this question and I, I don't have the answer to it. And I know out of everyone, you're the one that has the answer to that. Mama Sadiq alayhi salam replied to him, he says, how many organs, sense organs do you have? How many senses do you have? He says, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, I have five. He says, okay, name them. He says, I have hearing, tasting, smelling, seeing and touching. He says, what's the smallest sense you have? What do we use to look at? We use our eyes, but specifically our retina. The smallest sense that we have is the retina, which we look at people with. So, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, look around. What do you see? Hisham looked around. He says, I see the sky. I see the huge mansions. I see houses. I see basically everything. He says, the one who has placed all of this into your eye, into your small pupil, he cannot fit the entire world into an egg without enlarging the egg or without diminishing the size of the earth. He says, the Creator, what an answer. Let's repeat that answer. He says, if you can fit your, this entire scene in front of you, if a person goes on a very high mountain and looks down at the earth, he sees it so small. He sees the house is so small. Yet all of that, when he gets close to it, they're so huge. But all of that are fitted within the small pupil of the, of the person's eye. He says, if that, if that creator has created you with that sense of putting this entire world into that small pupil. Now they've reached the moon and you can look at the earth and see how big it is. And when you're looking at it, you're looking at almost all the earth. And you're looking at it with such a small eye. So he's saying the creator who put that into your eye, he can't put the world into an egg. It's a metaphor. But at the end of the day, the atheist got his answer. But the story, the discussion goes on between Hisham, the atheist, and Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And if you wanted to uh, continue reading this uh, the story, you can... Refer back to Al-Kafi, volume 3, chapter 1, page 159, and you can read the entire story. But hence, we see Imam Sadiq alayhi salam at the end of the day. We have to admit to this. Ahlul Bayt, and specifically Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, taught in every and contributed to every field of modern sciences today. Because his students taught other students. And each one that was taught opened a new gateway to a new knowledge. Inshallah, after the break, we will get to touch upon various other contributions of the Imam. But why did I focus on the first part of today's episode? Why did I focus on monotheism? Because Imam al Sadiq Islam, through the traditions that were transmitted through him, we can find that Imam al-Sadiq wanted to educate his community because he knew the corruption. He knew that an era of deviation will occur after the Imams. So he wanted to put through, he wanted to put this through to us. So when a person asks us, we don't just sit there and not know what the answer is. 
so we can learn and hopefully by the end of today's episode we can grasp some knowledge through the life of Imam As-Sadiq alayhi salam so we can get to develop our life and enhance our abilities of knowledge but we'll continue our discussion but after the short break so do stay tuned brothers and sisters in Islam hope you inshallah enjoyed that short report although we are commemorating the tragic martyrdom of our sixth Imam eighth infallible Imam As-Sadiq peace and blessings be upon him now before the break we touched upon various aspects and various contributions of the Imam uh, we talked about the dialogue that went on between an atheist Hisham al Hakam who was a close companion of As-Sadiq and Imam As-Sadiq where he proved the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to an atheist who did not acknowledge God and the presence of God. However, Imam As-Sadiq alayhi salam, if, you, if we were to examine his life, many questions arise, you know, because the knowledge that he disseminated during his time is enormous. You know, you can't just teach 4,000 students and not a single tyrant of the time noticing it. You know, if we looked at the lives of the Imams before Imam al-Sadiq, we find Imam al-Baqir, he was persecuted. Imam al-Sajjad was persecuted. Imam al Hussein was persecuted and beheaded. Imam al Hassan was persecuted. Imam al Talib was persecuted. Fatim al-Zahra was persecuted along with Prophet Muhammad. So how did Imam al-Sadiq disseminate the enormous amounts of knowledge he did? And above all, where did he get his knowledge from? Now overlooking, you know, some people would say that the Imams do not receive divine revelation. I don't want to get into an argument with that. But forget about the fact that Imam al-Sadiq received revelation. Imam al-Sadiq, his first from the age of one, to 11 or 14, he was under the guidance and he was nurtured by his grandfather Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. And we all heard of the torture that Imam Sajjad had to go through. And then the remaining 23 years or the next 23 years after the age of 11 or 14, he was under the guidance of his father Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. Both of the Imams disseminated knowledge, Imam al-Sajjad and Imam al-Baqir. But the knowledge and the amount of knowledge that Imam al-Sadiq disseminated was different. Why? And some may say or some may ask the question, was Imam al-Sadiq better than the rest of the Imams? Because he disseminated so many knowledge and the Imams didn't have the knowledge? Well, of course not. The foundation was not laid for the other Imams to disseminate the same knowledge. 
they had different duties. If you looked at Prophet Muhammad, he had the duty of bringing Islam. Imam Ali ibn Talib had the duty of keeping the Muslims together. Same with Imam al Hassan. Imam al Hussein had to make a stand. Imam Zain al Abdin had, had to teach us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until the time of Imam al Baqir, where through his name we understand why he's named al Baqir, because he splits the knowledge, goes to its deep core and examines it and gives us a, a solution to questions that really no one can bring answers to. This is the father of Imam Sadiq and you wonder where he gets his knowledge from. His dad is the splitter of knowledge and people are still asking how did Imam Sadiq get his knowledge. So hence we can see Imam Sadiq playing a huge role within the the era of Islam or within the religion of Islam as a whole. After the 23 years of you know guidance of and, and nurture by Imam al Baqir Imam al Sadiq witnessed his father lay the foundation stone of establishing the first school of thought and introducing a lot of people have this misconception that they think that Imam al Sadiq is the first one to establish the first school of thought. It was Imam al-Baqir. But due to the persecution that Imam al-Baqir was under, Imam al-Sadiq continued that. So he witnessed his father establish the first school of thought and introducing the terms of such as jurisprudence and Quranic commentary. A lot of people, a lot of Muslims at that era they, they knew how to read the Qur'an, but they did not know the meaning of the verses. You know, when the Qur'an talks about astronomy, when the Qur'an talks about how the universe is formed, and how the, the planets orbit, and the sun's orbit, you know, it's difficult for them back then to understand. Now you can just Google it. Wikipedia has everything. But back then, the people did not know. So what did they do? They went to the people of knowledge. Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. So through that, Imam al-Baqir began to disseminate his knowledge. Imam al-Sadiq learned from his father. After the demise of his father, the martyrdom of Imam al-Baqir, Imam al-Sadiq took on the responsibility of Imama. He began to teach. He began to disseminate knowledge. And to take the knowledge from his forefathers and dissect it even more and bringing proofs to the existence of God to the oneness of God teaching in chemistry as we mentioned in physics at the age of 11 or 12 Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam refuted and rejected the idea of Aristotle that the, the, the four elements theory of Aristotle and he says how can a man say that this planet has only four elements, earth, water, fire, and air. He says, earth by itself, every single metal within earth is an element alone. Water, air, and fire, all of them are a mixture of elements. For a thousand years, up until now, until they have proved that, that it's different, but for a thousand years, People believed in the, in, in, in the four elements theory. They thought that these were the only four elements. Yet Imam al-Sadiq at the age of 12 was able to give us which elements formed water, which elements formed fire, what kind of elements, what kind of metals are found within the earth, and what kind of elements are within the air that we breathe at the age of 12. Some people refute the idea, but if you go back to the books of tra tra tradition, to the narrations, historical books, you will find how Imam al-Sadiq at that small age was able to prove that. 
And up until now, people are starting to understand what Imam Sadiq was saying. At the end of the day, if we looked at how Imam Sadiq refuted and rejected that theory, and how air is a, is, is, is a mixture of elements, and those elements give us the ability to breathe, it's astonishing. At the same time, it's disturbing not to see how a lot of people have shifted away from the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt have not really taken the responsibility and learning the lives of each of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt Hopefully through such episodes, we can raise awareness across the world and you know, bring people closer to the Ahlul Bayt and teach them the ways that Ahlul Bayt taught their companions and so on and so forth until we got the knowledge today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.